Max Chandler Mather joins me now. Max Chandler Mather, welcome to 7.30. Thanks for having me. Now, do you think that potential Green voters will warm to the image of you giving full-throated support to a militant union that has enabled the infiltration of organised crime into its business? Well, for us, this is about principles, and the thing about principles is you should stick to them. What we oppose is the same uh, thing that New South Wales Council of Civil Liberties have said, which is a government uh, riding roughshod over procedural fairness and natural justice uh, and seizing control of a union, giving them the power to sack workers and officials who haven't even been alleged to have done anything wrong and permanently ban them from working for a union uh, without going through a fair trial or giving them the presumption of innocence. L this is a, this... Yes, well, let's just talk about what we saw today because this wasn't a discussion about the fine points of the administration. This was, as I just said, you giving full-throated support to a militant union and I'm interested to know how Greens voters will respond to that. But let's just talk about some of the things that... Uh, that are at the, the basis of this decision to call an administrator. These are, include a senior union official threatening to bash the owners of an Indigenous labour hire company. Excuse me, but I'll effing end you, you effing dog, I'll tear your effing soul out. Now, what the reporting clearly shows is an ugly culture of largely male aggression. How does that sit with the Greens' philosophy of non-violence? Well, the Greens strongly oppose any misogyny or intimidation or thuggery and any allegations of wrongdoing should be prosecuted But if you, through... if you oppose that kind of behaviour, what are you doing on their stage? Well, firstly, those are allegations against individuals that should be prosecuted through the courts. What but we've, seen was... them, we've seen them on film, you've seen them on film. So what are you doing sure. on stage with an organisation that allows and enables that kind of behaviour? Well, thankfully, Sarah, we live in a country that isn't trial by media. It's trial through the courts, through a fair trial and a fair process with the presumption of innocence. Now, if those principles are to be worth anything, they should be applied universally, regardless of whether or not you do or don't like that individual. And I'm sure there'll be some of your listeners who don't like the CFMEU, but the point is, as the New South Wales Council of Civil Liberties have said, this sets a dangerous precedent where the government can seize control of any membership-based organisation deny those members democratic control of that organisation, sack whoever they like, deny those workers the right to procedural fairness or access to the presumption of innocence or a fair trial. This should be alarming for everyone in this country. Uh, and really, this is also about the separation of powers. A grade 12 student will be able to tell you that it's the courts and the judicial system that should prosecute these issues, let's just get, not let's, be decided on by parliamentarians. Let's just get a, a sense of how you respond to uh, some of the evidence that was produced in the media. And as I said, quite a lot of it was on film and on audio. Um, the, these are allegations of CFMEU officials pushing bikey controlled subcontractors onto companies and retaining underworld standover men. Um, the draconian response that we're discussing is because of the nature of the allegations that I've spelled out, but you seem to be prepared to ignore that. Not at all, Sarah. I've said repeatedly just then that they should be prosecuted through the courts. I would point out, though, that we saw the Banking Royal Commission find systematic bribery, financial abuse, uh, and uh, fraud, and the government never proposed to pace any bank into administration. The 2013 uh, Royal Commission into Systematic and Institutional Child Sexual Abuse found terrible allegations in the Catholic Church. At no point was there any suggestion that the Catholic Church would be placed into administration. The suggestion was that those crimes should be prosecuted through the courts, and the same should happen with these allegations as well. So, you're, so, so let me just understand this. In the meantime... So the ACTU was prepared to act based on media reporting because of the seriousness of what was on display, including, and maybe in particular, bikey infiltration. They immediately suspended the con construction division of the CFMEU and supported the administrator. Are you saying that the ACTU is also anti-worker, as you did today? Uh, well, I didn't make any uh, comments about... Sorry, the you, used the, you used the term anti-worker about the appointment of the administrator. So, given that the ACTU supports the action that's been taken, is the ACTU also anti-worker? Well, in this instance, I do disagree with the ACTU uh, in their support, if they do support this government legislation. I haven't seen public comments from them. Uh, because there is a qualitative difference between the ACTU suspending the CFMEU and the government... Uh, coming over the top 
uh, and overriding a federal court process and fair work commission process that was in train. And again, there, it sets a precedent where in the future, if a government doesn't like where a court or judicial process is going with regards to any civil society institution, they now have a blueprint to override the courts and impose themselves on that civil society institution if they do not like them. So, now, so that is I, a really just, dangerous precedent. I just want to come back to your response to what we've seen, because what, what you're talking about is uh, a judicial process which will no doubt in some of these instances follow, but what the ACTU was talking about was the seriousness of the evidence that was provided, including, as I said, quite a lot of it on film and on audio. They felt that it was urgent to act. How do you respond to what you saw in that evidence? Well, it's shocking, and, and uh, the Greens oppose any misogyny, intimidation or corruption. And then the, then the why are you sharing a stage with that organisation that has allowed this behaviour to fester? Well, because those are allegations against individuals, but I'm sure you wouldn't be standing there suggesting that the tens of thousands of workers there should have their character defamed. These are construction workers who go to work every day, whose construction union defends their rights, keeps them safe at work, wins better wages and conditions for them, and in some instances saves their lives. We also know the construction union in the past has helped win the eight-hour workday, engaging green bands, protecting heritage in Sydney. I think uh, we're, not, we're not talking about the indiv individual workers. As you understand, this is targeted in particular at the officials running the CFMEU who have allowed this culture uh, to flourish. But let me put this question to you in a different way. You've built a reputation, a strong reputation, fighting for renters and poor people struggling with the cost of living. Mm. Why trash that reputation now by aligning yourself with an organisation that promotes thuggery? Uh, I disagree with that characterisation, Sarah, and I think that's... Uh, incredibly unfair and ignores the well-founded criticism of this government legislation, again, including from the New South Wales Council for Civil Liberties. Uh, we're, not here, we're not here actually discussing the, uh, the details of the administration. We're here discussing your role on the stage with the CFMEU, telling them that they should regard their organised collective strength as a badge of honour. Let me put it to you as a question. Uh, John Setka was on, is on film delivering a message to the home of another union official in Victoria, calling him a dog. He says mm. that's not a threat. Um, he also says it's not the CFMEU's job to ask its officials whether or not they have bikey connections, organised crime connections. Do you agree with John Setka? Of course not. That's, uh, frankly, Sarah, I think that's a bit of an offensive question. You can, you can watch my speech. I'm sure you did. In that speech, I outlined, as you said, that union members should be proud of their collective strength because that's how you stand up to big corporations and property developers who often force those workers into dangerous situations. A lot of those workers are renters, often struggling to make ends meet, like any other worker in this country. And my point was uh, that we should have solidarity with those workers because they deserve a free free and democratic union. And let's be clear, the precedent this sets now, any worker organisation in this country could have this done to them. And this could be workers in the future that do stand up to governments, do engage in mass strike action to protect their rights and conditions. I was proud to stand alongside the tens of thousands of construction mm -hmm. workers because they deserve a voice in this country as well. And right now, they're being subject, subject to the most draconian anti-worker laws this country has seen. Authorised by Jay McCall, Australian Greens, Canberra.